every good laptop review starts with a cat. Thank you, Zenkitty. You can go back to your perch. And I'm not joking, he really does have a perch there. It's on top of my UPS. This is Florina. Florina is my latest laptop. Florina is a Lenovo ThinkPad T440S. Uh, this is currently available from Lenovo's site. The cheapest that this runs off of Lenovo's site is $1,000 for the baseline model. As specced here, this is actually $1,620. I did not spend $1,620 on a laptop. This is still the most expensive laptop I've ever purchased, but I paid a thousand for it off of the Lenovo Outlet site. I'll put a link down in the description for where that is if you want to buy a similar laptop. They frequently run deals. Their stock updates about every 15 minutes. And, well, I got a $1,620 laptop for a thousand dollars, so ha! On one side, you have the standard headphone jack. There is no microphone input on this laptop. There is a SIM card slot. For if you have a mobile broadband adapter so you can, oh, I don't know, be able to surf the internet without actually having Wi-Fi. There is a SD card slot down below it. I have an SD card in it. There's one USB port on this side, an Ethernet jack, which is very uncommon. I'm really hoping that this works well because I kind of can't see from this angle. There's an Ethernet jack here. This is really uncommon in an Ultrabook. Usually they're too thin to even have one, and as you can tell, it barely even fits here. The X1 Carbon actually has an adapter to make it work. There is a standard D-Sub VGA output on this side and a Kensington lock, so you can lock it down. Again, VGA outputs are kind of uncommon on Ultrabooks as well. No ports on this side. This side has two additional USB ports, one of which will actually be active for charging devices while the laptop's off. It's kind of a handy feature. A lot of newer laptops have that. <clears throat> also, a display port, mini display port adapter. This can be changed to whatever format you want. There's an additional expansion slot, which my laptop doesn't actually have anything in. And also, a power adapter. Nothing on the front. On the bottom, you have a Lenovo T440 series dock. I don't own a dock, so I can't exactly demonstrate that functionality. There is also the removable battery. Removable like so. The battery is actually pretty slim. You can sort of see it. There's a second integrated battery inside, I believe it's roughly here, inside of the case. You can't really remove it. The laptop in general weighs about a kilo and a half, uh, or about three pounds seven ounces for those of you that have not converted to the superior measurement system. Inside, we have a 14-inch 1080p screen. This is a very high-quality screen, if I do say so myself. It's a 1080p IPS screen. Viewing angles on an IPS screen are superb. I can actually read screen content like this, as strange as that sounds. Um, it's 178 degrees officially, if I remember correctly. And that also includes up and down. Opens out pretty well, too. Although, sort of see, there's a lip here, so it does not actually open out this well normally. There is a 720p webcam up here. There is a fingerprint reader, which you should never use. I can rant about that later. It's not really pertinent to this review. I would not have bought it if it were for that. There's the standard chiclet-style keyboard. Chiclet-style keyboards are pretty common. Apple did it first. Everybody else copied. It's not the worst thing in the world. I actually prefer chiclet-style keyboards to the older-style keyboards, like what my previous laptop has. Um, I don't know if it's even visible, but the style where things can get between the keys, and it's just not very nice. Chiclet-style, they're frequently island-based, so things don't normally get between the keys very easily. It's easy to clean. This particular laptop has a 256 gig SSD or solid state drive. That means there's no spinning disk. So when I'm moving around like this, it doesn't actually affect anything. Please don't do that with a standard laptop. It also has 12 gigabytes of RAM. There's four gigabytes integrated and an eight gigabyte chip that's actually removable if I took apart the laptop. The laptop is actually user serviceable. Believe it or not, that's actually pretty uncommon on laptops, especially by laptops made by a particular fruit manufacturer. I really don't like the idea of non-user serviceable laptops. 
this is mostly user serviceable. There's a couple of components that I can't actually change, like the integrated stick of RAM that's soldered on board. I can't do anything about that, unfortunately. This particular laptop has an 802.11 ABGN AC network adapter. It means it can connect to 802.11 AC wireless networks, like what I have here in my house, along with A and N 5 gigahertz networks or B, G and N 2.4 gigahertz networks. If you don't know what I just said, don't worry about it. If you do understand what I said, that's awesome. There's problems with the adapter, though. I'll get to that when I start going through the pros and cons. What do I like about this laptop? I love the screen. The screen is awesome. I love how fast that it responds, both the screen response and the laptop itself. I enjoy the keyboard, except for the function lock feature. I have to enable the function lock, otherwise all of the, like, F5 to refresh a web page, that doesn't work. It will instead decrease screen brightness because somebody got in their mind that people don't use function keys. Actually, to be honest, most people don't, but I do, so function lock. Um, I like the fact that this laptop has three USB ports. That's not that common in an Ultrabook. I like the fact that it has multiple video outputs. I like the fact that I can replace parts. Um, you have no idea how many laptops that I thought were awesome except for the fact that it had 4 gig of RAM and you couldn't do anything about that. Or if you did, you'd have to buy a newer model with 8 gig of RAM that costs $700 more for no reason. That's pretty good given that I don't have a high capacity battery or anything like that. You can actually get a higher capacity battery. At that point, it jumps up to about 13. From what I've read, I don't have one, so I wouldn't know for my personal use. What I don't like about my laptop. See the entire thing pressing for me, pressing no matter where I'm at? That's what's called a click pad. It's basically one giant button and a touch-sensitive surface on top. By touch-sensitive surface, what I mean is it's similar to like a smartphone, if you've used one, where you just move your finger around it and that's how the mouse moves. It's very similar to a lot of touch pads, only you can also tap on top, similar to what you would do on a smartphone, and it registers as a left mouse click. That's fine, and Apple pioneered that for laptops. I will give them credit where credit is due. It works fine for an Apple laptop, where typically you only have one mouse button. You can plug in a standard mouse into an Apple laptop, of course, and use the right mouse button functionality, but this is a Windows laptop. We use the right mouse button. We open up context menus with it. We set options that way. We even paint in alternate colors that way. There's a lot of reasons for the right mouse button. These click pads are terrible on right, right mouse buttons. So what you're supposed to do is hit this area right by where my finger's at. So this lower area right here. You click there and you end up getting a context menu. Over here is the left mouse area. You press there and you get a left mouse button. Unfortunately, if you say, for instance, click in the middle, nothing happens at all because they decided, oh, you don't need that zone. Now, if you use the little if you use a little think point, you can press up toward the top and right click. Unfortunately, if you use this, you can't. That's dumb. Damn it, Lenovo. Come on. That's not even the obnoxious part. The obnoxious part is scrolling. So say you have a page like this, you know, impressive page, many text, such picture, the way you scroll is you use two fingers, like so, and move it down and up. I actually have this inverted by the defaults. The defaults are, let's be honest, asinine. The defaults are treating it like a touch screen, where you would just move your finger down in order to move the entire image up. This is not a touch screen. This should not be treated like a touch screen. This should be treated like a standard scrolling device, like any other touchpad, where moving your fingers down moves everything down, moving them up moves it up. That at least can be changed with a setting. What can't be changed, and take a look at the mouse cursor, so when you scroll, it turns into a little scrolly thing, right? However, if you scroll for, let's see, just had the, if you scroll for a small amount, notice that the scroll thing stays for a little bit? What ends up happening when it sticks like that, and it usually happens when I'm moving around with the way I use my laptop, is that if you move the mouse cursor afterward, it continues scrolling. So when I try to scroll down on something and click a link on something, it instead keeps scrolling and I click on something completely random, like an advertisement banner or something stupid like that. That's dumb!
Why would you do something like that? That's gotta be an intentional thing, because it's not like that would make sense for a random bug or anything like that. That actually has to be something they thought about and went, this sounds like a great idea, just like that whole inverted scrolling thing that I don't understand. Why? Ugh. There's also the fact that there's integrated components with this, like the fact that I can't remove four gigabytes of memory from this laptop. This is a problem, say, for instance, if that memory were to go bad, and I didn't know somebody that knew how to desolder things, or cut traces or anything like that, this laptop would be worthless. You cannot replace that. Why would you do such a thing? I know it's supposed to be in the name of slimness and things like Don't give me that crap. This laptop is plenty slim and I have a slot. They could have designed this to be maybe even just marginally thicker and still have been able to let me replace both sticks of RAM. They did this in order to lock people in so they couldn't upgrade things as easily. And that bothers me. The battery, it looks like it might be sort of user serviceable, just not serviceable while things are active. I don't know, I haven't cracked it open myself yet, but <clears throat> battery's a similar situation. One of the batteries you can't do anything about. At least there's still a second battery and at least there's still a second RAM slot. So I can extend things. I just have a bit of a cap and it's not that big of a cap. No, the major problem, major, major issue with this laptop, and I can't fully fault Lenovo for this, because this isn't their fault, this is Intel's fault, is the wireless card is a piece of crap. Well, the card itself isn't crap. The drivers for the card are crap. So, a wireless network device, what it should be able to do is let this device communicate with my wireless network. Just like, for instance, this device communicates with my wireless network. This device has an older Intel wireless card, an 802.11 ABGN card. This works out great. This laptop is perfect on wireless. Sure, it doesn't have newer features like being able to use 802.11 AC. This doesn't have a built-in Bluetooth adapter, but oh boy, the range. I have over a block worth of range on my 2.4 gigahertz network. And it's not like I'm the only house in this area. There's plenty of other houses with Wi-Fi. I still have wireless access turning down the road and going someplace else. That is awesome. My, my router isn't even in an optimal place in this house. It's actually in my basement. Not only does this one have a substantially lower range, namely I barely have wireless signal outside of the house, but it cuts out. If you sleep this laptop and wake it up from sleep, it won't necessarily actually see the wireless card or wireless network. Well, if you wake up this laptop from sleep, <coughs> it will reconnect to the wireless network, but it won't actually do anything with it. It will act as though you have no signal. Your router is having problems. In fact, if you use troubleshooting in Windows 8, it will tell you your router is having problems. No, it's the stupid wireless card. There is no fix for this at this time. Intel claims to have fixed this issue with a driver update. It's not fixed. Intel, you're a bunch of dumbasses. Come on, fix this crap. There is no reason for this. This should have been caught by QA. I mean, this is a bug that affects almost every single laptop released in the past three months. Three months worth of releases. Presumably they beta tested this ahead of time. This wasn't exactly an unpopular product. This affects almost all of the wireless cards that were released during this time. This makes no sense, Intel. I don't know if it's fully your problem, I don't know if it's Microsoft's problem, because this only affects Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. I'm actually probably going to wipe my laptop this weekend and install Windows 7 on it, because this is bothering me a lot. The only fix when you have this problem happen is to reboot, and even that's not reliable. I have sometimes had to reboot my laptop five or six times to be able to get normal wireless connectivity again. Even when I reboot, I have horrible latency from... I have dial-up level latency on my laptop in my local network pinging my router. There is no excuse for that. I almost have line of sight to the router in this room. That's dumb. Now that I'm done ranting about the wireless card, how do I feel about this laptop itself? Well, first let me give you a quick score rundown. A 10 is a perfect laptop. Perfect laptops do exist for me, they just don't normally exist in any price range I'm willing to spend. In general, this means that every feature is exactly the way I want it. The laptop is installed exactly the way I want it. 
I receive the laptop, open it up, and I can immediately use it the way I want to use it. I don't need to do any upgrades. I don't need to work around any random crapware that's been installed on the laptop. I don't have to worry about any of that. It just has a plain, ordinary Windows experience and a blank slate for me to do what I want. I can still upgrade the laptop. It has all the features that I need already, though, so that's more future-proofing. This is not a 10, not even with the wireless card things fixed. A 1, on the other hand, is this laptop is worthless. Why did I buy this laptop? The worst laptop I've ever bought, my crap top, would be rated a 2. Namely, it functioned. And that's about the best that I can say about it. It worked for when I needed it for, and nothing else. This is a far, far, even with its wireless problems, it's not a 2. We'll put it that way. So, final rating, I give this, assuming that the wireless problems were fixed, I would give this a 7. What that means is that, one, there was some bundled crapware with software. Very little compared to, say, HP or Dell or Acer or Asus. But there was still some. I had to uninstall Norton Internet Security. It's a piece of crap. Sorry, Samantha. It is. I had to uninstall a couple of other app trial applications on here, but at least the trial applications were things that people would want. I mean, they weren't, you know, bonsai bunny level or anything like that. They were just alternate versions of products that I personally don't use, so it didn't bother me that much. The integrated components bother me a little bit more. Basically, those things combined knock it down to about an 8. The touchpad, the clickpad alone knocks it down a full point because it's an utterly asinine decision that I don't understand. And everything else is fine on it, though. It performs exactly what I need it to. I mean, sure, this is not a gaming laptop. I can run Skyrim, sort of. I can run Civ 5, mostly fine, at normal settings, at 1080p even. The wireless drivers, though. As it stands right now, this laptop would be rated a 4. I would not recommend this laptop. I would not recommend any laptop with any Intel wireless adapter until they fix their broken crap. Or alternately, if you're running Windows 7. Windows 7, apparently, this laptop works perfectly fine. Ignoring the wireless driver problems, would I recommend this laptop? Yes. It's generally good. It's less bad than most of the other options. How about that? Um, I would not, in fact, want to pay $1,600 for this laptop. Not now, not later, not ever. It's definitely not worth $1,600. I paid probably about the right price for it. I paid about $1,000 after tax. Similar laptops include, um, from Lenovo, there's also the T440P series. The P series, the P is for performance. It's a thicker and heavier laptop, but generally the same laptop. Some models have discrete or dedicated graphics rather than integrated graphics like this one has. If that's what floats your boat, go right ahead. I personally didn't want that. All of my other laptops did have that and swap between them based off of what I was playing, and I have problems with that in Linux. There's the Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro. I... I'm a little hesitant about the hinges on that, and it's not anywhere near as user-replaceable friendly as this laptop, but it's a lot cheaper for typically a better laptop. At the moment, it's more expensive than what I paid for this, so I'm very happy to have gotten this instead, and it would have the same wireless adapter problems that I'm currently having, so it's a bit of a wash there. Outside of Lenovo, there's the uh, HP Spectre. The HP Spectre series is a decent series. Expect a lot of crapware and lower battery life, but it's substantially cheaper. There's also fewer things that you can replace, though. Or the HP Touch Smart series. Um, one of the models actually has user-replaceable parts like this, but the battery life is about half. It's also a few hundred dollars cheaper, even new, never mind refurbished or anything like that. That's about it. I hope this review was educational and actually entertaining. I don't know. I kind of felt like I just ranted the entire time. I apologize. Hopefully this video won't be horribly screwed up on editing. Eh. I will see you tomorrow with a much shorter video. I haven't decided what it is yet. Bye.